Okay, so basically, Drop Buddies is a peer-to-peer -peer delivery service. Um, so we connect uh, individuals and businesses who want to ship packages or who want to transport packages with people already headed in the direction of the packages. So pretty much how we do this is we crowdsource the whole thing and we have independent people scattered all across Lagos that help do these deliveries. So we did a Alpha and Beta launch um, last year, that's 2016, the beginning of 2016. So last year, we started, but not full public launch. So it wasn't a full public launch, but it was more of like a test, test releases actually. But we fully launched uh, a couple of months ago. Well, it's been really good actually. Um, from uh, within the last 12 months, um, up until this period, we've done about 5x. Um, when we're talking in terms of revenue, so about 5x in terms of revenue, yeah. Um, competition is, is natural. I think it, it happens irrespective of whether you think your business is like super awesome or whether you think your business is, or you're creating something that uh, is some futuristic thing. When you do something, at the end of the day, there, there's always bound to be competition. So people often will probably replicate your technology or maybe when you were starting out, somebody else was probably thinking of the same thing. Ideas are never exclusive, so competition is very, very natural. It's, uh, we try to stay ahead in terms of like the technology we bring. So we're looking at trends and we try to get feedback from businesses. We try to get feedback from the actual users that are using it so we can iterate on, the, on what we are doing and we can you know, pivot if, needs be, um, if, if need be. And um, you know, just creating a better user experience a better business experience for um, customer experience and technological experience. So making everything seamless. So we try to make the technology seamless, the user experience seamless, and you know. Actually, we're still within Lagos, so we still play within Lagos. We tried experimenting with um, interstate type of delivery, but then we decided to take it one city at a time and one step at a time. But over the next couple of months, um, we look out, we're looking to um, actually scale out of Lagos to actually start doing a whole lot of things, interstate type of deliveries and a whole lot of things. And on the supply side, um, we are looking to actually empower more people. So because to an extent it's a social startup. And on the supply side, we're looking to, you know, empower more people because I said it's a social initiative aside from the fact that it makes money. So because we don't have our own fleets, so we don't have our own bikes, we don't have our own cars, and we're leveraging on people to actually do these things. So we actually want to have, or to reach more people, to be able to empower more people, to generate more revenue for these people and to generate more revenue for ourselves. So empowering 25,000 people across Africa, you know, within Nigeria, empowering thousands of people, interstate deliveries, and possibly some other interesting things that I might not be able to let out right now. Okay, startups are really, really hard. You know, a startup is like a, let's say, difficult and a lonely journey so first of all if you want to venture into one or if you want to go into you know founding a startup or something or anything around that first of all you have to have grit that's the first thing you have to have you have to be extremely determined because and you, it's, it's not the bandwagon type of effect i know there's like this startup fever right now that's happening so everybody just feels like okay i buy a domain name i buy a hosting and then i already have a company there's a difference between a website and actually building a business. So, you know, if you want to go into actually starting a business, you have to be sure that, okay, this is actually the right thing. You have to have conviction that, okay, this is what I'm supposed to be doing. Because there's going to be a lot of tests or testing around it. Um, we actually were experimenting with actually owning our own fleet. And then we're experimenting with a lot of things because it was still like, we were still trying to see how, you know, the reception of what we're trying to do. So we actually approached a couple of businesses, okay, this is what we're trying to do. A couple of them said, okay, let's jump on this thing. It sounds interesting. It's a new, it's a new initiative. It sounds like a new, new thing. Let's try it out. And somebody gave us, I think, about, I think 50, it was about 40, 50K um, of, fragile it was some very fragile stuff a couple 
a couple of fragile stuff. And then in the process of actually doing these things, and because we were still experimenting with a couple of things, everything got messed up. Everything got damaged. And that thing happened a couple of times. It happened about three times to be exact. And then we started thinking in ourselves, like, okay, is this something we want to do? Are these problems that are actually happening right now? Are they, are, are they like things that would eventually crumble the business and stuff? So, you know, we, we just really had to sit down and, because we're like in, you just start something and obviously, and from the blues, within a day or two, we've already wrapped up debts that a couple hundred thousand naira, we're like, oh my God, is this the right business? Are we in the right business? But basically, we just had to think around the model and just had to iterate a bit and just, uh, you know, fix one or two things. Um, but, okay, everything has its own advantages and disadvantages. There are clear advantages to being venture-backed, like VC-backed, or raise money from a PE firm or any of that sort of stuff. Um, but I would always advise people to bootstrap. I think bootstrapping, it's, it's, it's always the way. Because you can take your business to a point where people see your business as more valuable, and the entry points or the entry levels to that uh, investment are actually way, way, way higher. And at the beginning of the business, I don't feel like you actually need hundreds of thousands of dollars to actually kickstart it. You need to prove the business model works. You know, do an alpha test, do a beta test. In, you know, do tiny research. You know, make sure get one or two customers, bootstrap up to a certain point, and then you can go for the big, the bigger ones. Don't, first things first, don't follow the hype. Operate beneath the hype. Second thing, okay, that's more like the third thing. Third thing is um, if you don't have like this inner conviction, like, okay, this is the right thing to do, then don't start at all because it's a very, very lonely and it's a very, very difficult journey. You know, some people might tell you that it's very interesting. You see success stories here and there, you read TechCrunch. And they say, oh, somebody just raised a hundred million dollars. There's a lot of hype in the tech industry. So, but before you get to that point of your business getting hyped, there's a lot of challenges that you often go, you have to go through. So if you don't have that conviction, just make sure that you know what you're doing. Be very, very sure, 200% sure that you know what you're getting into. You know, do tests, do research. Um, actual research to actually be sure that okay this is a market there's a market so that's the first thing so you have to establish that there's a market first before you even try to actually experiment with any business model so even if it's 100 people if it's 10 people if it's 20 people actually establish that a number of people are actually willing to pay for that service and don't follow the hype that's 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 the most important thing i'll tell any startup founder <laughs>